Hello and welcome to Gabbit Media. I'm Grant Abbott and today we're looking at whether remote computing, so renting a powerful computer remotely, is a viable option for 3D artists. So some of you will remember the previous video where I talked about remote computers and asked the question, is this the future? So Vagan, the people that offer these remote computers, approached me and asked me whether I wanted to do another video because they've made some improvements. So let's see if the future is any closer. Now before starting, it's important for me to say that Vagan have actually sponsored me to make this review. However, it is a review. They're not paying to advertise. They're not paying me to say whether I like it or not. I'm just giving you an honest review. It's always going to be an honest review for me. It's far more important than the integrity of this channel than it is any sponsorship deal or anything like that. So first of all, what is Vagon? Now last time I talked about them was a few months ago and they're still doing the same process of offering a computer online so you can log in with something as basic as a Chromebook and have the access to all that online computing power. So you can be running Blender through your Chromebook and doing quite complex things, big scenes, lots of polygons, lots of textures and so forth, rendering fairly quickly through a Chromebook. And in my previous review, I was quite impressed, but I didn't think it was quite there yet. I didn't feel that comfortable using an online machine, and I felt it was a tiny weeny bit laggy, uh, so I couldn't get that response that I wanted, which obviously I could with my home computer. So what's changed this time, and am I tempted to ditch my desktop and just use an online machine at Vagon? Well, it's got to be said, when I go in, they've got some nice simple menus and it's easier to see the comparisons of the computers now. I would like to see a bit more comparison there. It says it's got four cores, but what are those cores? I did contact them to ask them about their CPUs and they said it was four gigahertz CPUs. The Intel Xeon for just the CPU based machines and the ones that have powerful GPUs, they've got three gigahertz versions of the Xeon. They've upgraded their GPUs so they can support optics, which is great for Blender users, of course. And one really nice thing now, which I think led it down in the past, was I can easily drag and drop files from my computer and download files very quickly and easily. One thing that many users will be pleased about is that they've changed their prices and managed to lower them. At the moment, we've got a pretty good computer here for only $1 an hour. That's the lowest you can go as a Blender user because anything below that doesn't get supported, but they do go as low as 25 cents, which is quite impressive really. Perhaps that would be useful for someone who's doing maybe something like photo editing or something along those sort of lines. The more powerful machines are certainly a lot more expensive and you'd only use those for certain tasks. But I did find the basic machine was really, really good. It didn't seem that dissimilar to what I use every day. I'm using a Ryzen 370 and an RTX 280 Ti. So I've got a reasonably powerful machine here and I didn't see too much difference from this basic Vagon machine to mine in the basic tasks that I was doing. And I went to about 20 million polygons in the viewport with that basic machine. So pretty good stuff, I've got to say. They've made some improvements in the color depth and the streaming performance, so it's much closer to not really realizing you're using something online and it feels like it's your main computer that you're using at home. I must admit when I was trying it out, I did feel quite comfortable and I was modeling away without any issues, which is really nice. There were slight viewport issues when I was using it and I did contact them to ask them about that. Um, so when I was moving around the scene, it would take a bit of a moment to refresh and it looked a bit glitchy. There was a slight bit of user error there. I realized that you could go into the viewport settings and change it to a really high quality, but there were still slight glitches uh, occasionally when I was moving around the viewport, which did detract from the experience. They are telling me that they're getting a 4K streaming option, so hopefully those problems will be fixed. Try it out for yourself and see whether they've updated it and see how you feel. They've told me that they've added new locations, Sydney, Singapore, North California and Mumbai, so you'll get a lower latency experience. They had a few keyboard problems last time. I really hated the scroll direction. It was as if you're using a Mac, which I don't like because I'm used to a PC. And they've got options to change that, so that's really great. They've decreased the time it takes to kind of build your machine and start it up. I would say it still takes a little bit long for my liking, two to three minutes uh, when you're first sort of building your machine and then when you start to run it, there's a sort of two minute delay whilst you're waiting for that machine to kind of load up, I suppose. Obviously when you're using your home PC, it does take a little while to start up, but um, those delays, I suppose I'm always trying to shut down the machine and then load it up and I imagine most people would so to save costs. So those sort of two minute delays could be costly to some people. Now you've seen some of me playing around in the background here, but I'll give you a bit more of an in-depth review of how I got on. 
It did take a few minutes to start and build my machine. It was nice though that I could quickly change uh, from a low uh, based machine, call it low, it's a fairly decent machine to be honest and I felt quite comfortable using it, uh, to a fast machine for rendering. And that was not instantaneous, you still had to build that machine, but I didn't have to transfer any files or anything like that so I could just suddenly say I want more GPUs and I want that big powerful machine there please for rendering and jump to that. It does obviously cost more, it's quite expensive that one, um, but it is only for rendering and then I can jump back again. Of course you could go across to a render farm but it's really nice that I had all my files there um, so I didn't have to think about packing the blender file or all the textures where are they going to go. Uh, so that was quite a nice experience. Now I had to install Blender but they are thinking about offering pre-built machines, so one with Blender on it, so you just have to go onto that machine and it's already there. I like the fact that it has things like auto turn off so you could set the amount of time that it automatically turns off without use and I think that's quite useful because I did a couple of times forget to turn it off and just sort of leave it running in the background and that's not so good. Now I did have this visual issue where it didn't seem to have a very good sort of frame rate uh, and it seemed a little bit glitchy so uh, that was a bit of a downer. I have talked to them like I say they are offering a 4k version they're hoping that's going to sort it out and they're actually looking into what's going on there uh, so they're quite good and responsive in that sense. And it only happened some of the time so that must have been some sort of strange glitch. It seemed to happen when I introduced the particle system and it seemed to cause errors there so that might be perhaps where the issue lies. Most of the time it was really superb and the viewport display was excellent. Now a big downfall for me and a reason that I won't be moving across is that there's no tablet support yet. I think they are thinking about it and working on it but it does sound like quite a difficult thing for them to sort out. Uh, so I wasn't able to use my display tablet or my graphics tablet so I couldn't really move across to the system so it, that is the deal breaker for me and I think it might be for quite a few 3D artists but if you're a more technically minded artist in terms of you do a lot of hard surface modeling and that sort of thing then I, I would be very tempted to go across and start using one of these Vagum machines. The one thing I would be tempted is if I was going traveling then I could just take a simple laptop with me even a Chromebook and jump onto one of these Vagum machines and carry on with my work and that's something I probably will do in the future. Now I tried to really push it and see how far it would go before I could crash it and things. I went to about 24 million polygons and the viewport uh, was working really smoothly and that was actually on the cheaper machine. Uh, and then I went across to the rendering. That wasn't actually a very fast rendering experience and it was about the same as my computer. So I've got an RTX 280 Ti and they've got four Teslas in there. I think it's fairly comparable because I tested both on my machine and on their machine and it was pretty much the same so that was the more expensive machine I tried it on their very powerful one um, so I would have in some ways liked to have seen an even more powerful option up there uh, for really quick rendering. So will I be moving across to a Vagon machine? Well like I say if I'm on holiday or something like that or away from my main machine then yes I probably would and I think it's something I will do in future. But the big deal breaker for me is the fact that I can't draw on my computer. Uh, that's something that's essential for me. So please, Vagon, start working on that and you might have me. The other obvious drawback you have is the quality of your internet connection. So you do have to think about that and consider that. The thing to bear in mind, though, is that you are just streaming the image. So that's the quality of internet you need. You're not actually doing any sort of computing power and passing files to and from. It is only the same as streaming HD footage, so you shouldn't need an amazing connection to be able to get the best out of Vagon, but it does help if you have a good connection, especially if you're doing things where you want to transfer files from your machine to theirs, um, or back and forth, especially video files if you're doing video editing, then I don't think it's quite there for that and you would need quite a fast connection for yourself. But when you're using the Vagon machine, you're using their internet connection. So when I downloaded Blender, it was extremely quick. Uh, it took about one minute to download Blender, which I was very impressed with. <laughs> and that was quite exciting for, for me with my uh, not so good internet connection that I've got here. So to quickly summarize, it's not quite there for me or artists like me that are using drawing tablets. And that's always going to be a difficulty until we get that support. But I think for many sort of hard surface modeling artists, those sort of wanting to get into 3D hobbyists, I think this really is a good option. And the price of $1 per hour does seem really compelling. So I'm really impressed. I think you should have a go. Do check them out. Uh, sign up for the free trial and see what you think. Thanks for watching. Thanks to Vagon. And I'll see you next time.